Welcome back to Simmer and Stir, and today we're making butter horns, or as they're more commonly known, crescent rolls. You've seen them in the refrigerator case at the grocery store, but did you know that this is one of the easiest bread doughs to make at home? I've developed this no-need recipe to be easy for everyone to follow, so you can have the best buttery crescent rolls for your holiday table or whenever you want them. So let's get started. This is a no-need recipe that's going to spend a good amount of time in the refrigerator, so I like to wake up my yeast by dissolving it in some warm water and letting it sit for 5-10 to 10 minutes. In the meantime, combine some all-purpose flour, sugar, and salt in a medium to large bowl. This recipe has less sugar than some other recipes, so this isn't a sweet roll but has more of a classic dinner roll flavor. Next, we're going to bring back an old school tool, and that's a handheld pastry blender. I like to use hand tools whenever possible because lots of people don't have access to or the space for food processors or stand mixers, so using a hand tool allows everyone to enjoy this recipe. We're using that pastry blender to cut in a nice amount of butter, and now you know why they're called butter horns. They are buttery. This butter should be cold and you just want to add that to your dry ingredients. Now, I messed up here and in my excitement over my new old tool, I cut this butter a little too big and you can see how I'm struggling to incorporate this into my flour. It is a lot easier to cut the butter into smaller pieces before you add it to your dry ingredients. The reason you want to cut the butter into the dough instead of melting or kneading it in is because fat actually inhibits gluten formation. Gluten gives breads their structure and lift. In a no-knead bread, you don't want anything inhibiting the slow activation of the gluten, so keeping the butter in small solid pieces incorporates it into the dough, releasing its flavor and tenderizing properties once the butter melts in the oven and not as the gluten is developing during the slow fermentation process. So now that your butter is in pea-sized pieces, we can get back to our yeast. To the dissolved yeast, add in some milk and a well-beaten egg and whisk that together thoroughly. You don't want any large globs of egg white in there that would be hard to incorporate into this dough. By the way, if there's any delay in mixing together the wet ingredients and you've already got your butter cut into your flour, just pop your dry ingredients into the refrigerator so the butter doesn't melt. Now pour your wet ingredients into your butter and flour mixture and gently stir this together until you see no dry flour remaining. Be gentle with this because you're not trying to melt or fully incorporate the butter. These small pieces of butter are time-released flavor bombs so you can make this enriched bread dough instead of the more typical lean dough that is the basis for most no-knead bread recipes. So once it looks like this, and it will be sticky and impossible to handle at this point, you are going to cover it tightly with plastic wrap and refrigerate it for at least 8 hours or overnight or whenever you can get back to it the next day. It's at least 8 hours later and it's time to shape these rolls. This is a soft dough and we need to organize the gluten strands so that the dough has a little more strength and will rise better in the oven. So flour your clean counter, turn out your dough and flour the top of the dough as well. Pat the dough out into a rectangular shape and roll it out to approximately 7 by 12 to 15 inches, being sure to rotate the dough as you go to make sure it's not sticking to your work surface. Fold the dough in on itself like a business letter and roll it out again to 7 by 15 inches. You'll notice the dough is starting to snap back when you're rolling it and this just means you have activated those gluten strands. Now brush the surface of the dough with melted, cooled butter and fold it again to enclose this extra buttery layer. 
This last layer of butter is to encourage separation of the swirls of dough once the rolls are baked. Usually butter horns are brushed with butter as the last step before rolling up and baking, but that has a tendency to make them unravel in the oven. So by locking this last layer of butter between the layers of dough instead of directly on top, you get separation, but they will still stay together as they bake. Roll the dough once again to about a 7 by 12 inch rectangle. This is just to fuse the layers back together and seal in the butter. At this point your dough is really snapping back and getting a little too warm to work with, so wrap this in plastic wrap and refrigerate it for 30 minutes before the final cutting and shaping of the rolls. After resting for 30 minutes in the fridge, the dough is ready for final shaping. So flour your counter and both sides of the dough because you definitely don't want sticking at this point. Roll your dough out to at least 14 by 14 inches because we need to cut out a 12 inch circle to form the finished rolls. I've got this 12 inch ceramic baking tray that's perfect for this job so I can get a perfect circle. I'm using a pizza wheel to cut this out but you can also use a sharp knife. Remove the excess dough and you can roll that out again and make dinner rolls to feed your family before your other dinner guests arrive or let your kids have fun with it and practice making these rolls on their own. Even with resting, the dough still might shrink a little when cut, so find the center and then cut this into four even wedges. Now cut each quarter into thirds so you end up with 12 even wedges. Working one at a time, place a wedge of dough on a lightly floured surface with the wide end closest to you. Pull the tip of the wedge forward slightly and press it into the counter to flatten it. Cut a 1 half inch slit in the middle of the bottom of the wedge. Grab the outside corners of the wedge and gently pull them apart to create space between these two flaps. Now take the inside corners of these flaps and fold them up to meet the outside edges of the wedge, sort of like turning the collar down on a shirt. This widens the base of the wedge and creates a nice finished shape to the roll. Now simply roll the wedge up towards the point while gently pulling the sides outward until you get this classic crescent shape. Do this with all of your wedges of dough and place them seam side down onto a baking sheet that's been lined with two layers of parchment paper. Because this dough contains so much butter and an egg, it does brown really readily, so the extra layer of parchment paper helps keep the bottom of the rolls from burning. Or if you have a sill pad, that would be even more effective. Drape these with plastic wrap that's been sprayed with nonstick spray and let these rise at room temperature for two hours until they are not quite doubled in size, but nicely puffed. You can really see the difference between the rolls before proofing and after proofing right here. Transfer these to the center of a 375 degree oven for 14 to 16 minutes or until they look like this. These rolls come out beautifully browned without the need for an egg wash because of all the butter in the recipe. These are best served warm, so let these cool on the baking sheet for 10 minutes and then transfer them to your serving basket and serve them right away. You can make these a day ahead of time and simply pop them into a 350 degree oven for 5-7 to seven minutes to reheat them. These rolls won't unravel, but you can see the nice distinct layers from that last little bit of butter we brushed on and locked in before shaping the rolls. These rolls aren't as sweet as other butterhorn recipes, which means they are great as a dinner roll with savory dishes or with jam and coffee as part of breakfast or brunch. The best thing about these is they really taste like butter, not industrial hydrogenated oils and flavorings. They have a crisp and buttery exterior with a soft, pillowy dinner roll center.
They're also so easy to make. Even if you don't have a lot of time for baking or experience baking, you can definitely make these. No kneading, no heavy machinery necessary, and you've got these beautiful little rolls that everybody will love. Give this recipe a try and let me know what you think. Thank you so much for watching, and if you like this video, be sure to click the thumbs up button, subscribe to my channel, and share it with a friend. It's totally free and helps me more than you know. For the full recipe, which is also free and all the ingredient amounts, click the link to my website in the description box below this video. And I'll see you next time with another delicious and easy recipe.